Are you guys ready for this one? We're gonna talk about the electrical system that I have inside of my home that you see behind me here. But I wanna talk to you guys not only about the system that I have now, but about the variations in electrical uses that I've had and electrical systems I've had since I very first started building out this very rig that I'm living in currently right now. The system I have in my van is fully capable of keeping me off grid for a few days at a time with no sunlight and no driving whatsoever with zero electrical coming in to charge my system. And when it comes to designing your system, you need to figure out the type of van life that you're going to be living. Are you gonna be sitting still for long periods of time? Maybe in Canada where we don't get the greatest of solar conditions, especially during the winter months. Or are you gonna be living in Arizona in the winter and all summer long where you're gonna have peak solar all year long? Because here in Canada, we don't get the greatest of solar conditions unless you have a system that you can tip directly towards the sun. Because in the winter, our sun is not above us anywhere. In the winter, our sun is literally just about right beside us. It comes down at approximately that angle, comes up in the morning, stays at that angle all day and pops back down over the south. And if you were down south, that sun is probably gonna be up above you somewhere, meaning that if your solar panels are flat on your roof, you're gonna get optimal solar or close to optimal solar all day long. Here, we get sun like this in the winter. We might only get a prime few months where the sunshine is directly above the flat panels that are usually mounted on the top of an average person's camper van. My camper van, it's flat. I never, I chose not to do the option to do a tiltable solar, um, maybe down the line, but as of right now, mounting them flat actually works just fine for me. So let's dive into this piece by piece, starting with the solar on the roof. On the front side of my roof, I have three 100 watt Renogy solar panels, which are wired through and go into a gland on the roof there, which goes down into the inside of the vehicle. My solar panels are secured to my Rhino Rack roof rack system here, which is just bolted onto the side rain gutter of the vehicle. And there's little aluminum brackets that I had made from somebody who does some metal work, had bent those into place for me so I could bolt them to the bottom of the solar panel and also to the top here so I could secure it to my roof rack system. If you need things like these, the best way to do it is to just find somebody who does some, some metal working or aluminum bending and just, just kind of measure out exactly what you need. Somebody can make these guys for you pretty darn cheap. On the roof there, you're going to see two glands. Those things are called glands because you cut a hole in it, seal it, and run your wires through the roof. There's a white one. The white one is for all of my electrical up here from my perimeter lights to my light bar and uh, my WeBoost antenna. The black one there is the one that my solar runs through. Running your electrical wires through the glands on the roof is pretty simple. You cut yourself a hole in the roof, smaller than the gland, of course. Don't cut it too big, otherwise you're gonna get some water leaking in. And don't make it too small that those wires are really hard to force themselves through it, because the last thing you wanna do, because it's bare sheet metal, is to actually gouge the wire. So make the hole a little bit bigger, just in case you decide to add more things to your roof at a later point, you already have a hole cut big enough to run more and more wires through if you decide to upgrade anything up there as you build your van out. And trust me, it is gonna happen. You may throw solar up there now, then later before you know it, maybe a light bar, and who knows what else you decide to throw up there for electricity. But the glands are pretty simple. You cut the hole, you put some Sikaflex or whatever product you decide to use to seal it all in, glue it down to the roof, pour some stuff over the top, that leveling stuff, just make sure it's completely sealed and you're good to go. Right beside my bed here, I have a cabinet with my shoes in it. Up on the top, there's a little hole. And inside of here, you guys are gonna see where all of my electrical comes in. These two black ones here, those are for my solar panels. The rest of them are for all the other electrical stuff that's up on my roof. Because remember, I have two glands. So the black one is the solar. That one comes down to this unit right here. I've got a few spots in my van where I can control the electrical system inside of my van. But this unit is the brain behind absolutely everything. I don't remember the model unit on this thing. I will leave the links on, on our website at vancityvanlife.ca. But this controls the entire battery system. 
It's not fancy. It doesn't have any visual displays on here except for a few lights to let you know what's happening, what's going where, if it's in a good state of charge, type of batteries we have. It's pretty simple and that's why I chose to get this unit. It's a MPPT charge controller and also a DC to DC charger, which means that it can convert the power from my alternator into the proper power current that's needed to run and charge my lithium batteries inside of my van. The blue light here means that I'm running lithium. The green light means my batteries are in good condition currently. The red one means that we have solar coming in and the flashing alternator one shows that currently my batteries inside of my van are full. And because the batteries inside of my van are full, it's sending any additional current to my starter battery to keep my starting battery in my van topped up at all times, which is pretty cool. Behind this cabinet here houses two CanBat 100 amp hour lithium batteries giving me 200 amp hours of usable lithium power. You're not supposed to drive your lithiums below 80%, but if they do, they will last and survive a little bit better than running an AGM. I love it that all my electrical stuff is hidden behind here, which means I don't have to see it inside of my home. And usually if you guys look around, you don't see any of my charge controllers that are back there. It's all kind of designed to keep that stuff out of sight from the general person looking inside of my home or me just glancing around, I don't have to see all of that chaos right there in my face. That's why we chose to build a cabinet to house all of my batteries. I'm gonna show you guys back here, but it is a little bit messy. Yeah, back there. So there is a fuse block back there and well, all the wires running to everything inside of my electrical system. Right down here on the bottom is my 700 watt Renogy inverter, which will convert my 12 volt power from my 12 volt battery system into a usable current that I can use to charge my laptops. The only thing I have, let me turn on some lights here. The only thing I have inside of my van that runs on standard home style plug power is my laptop and what else? Yeah, my laptop. Oh, and my Jackery batteries, if I ever want to charge them off of my system inside of my van. Other than that, my entire system is 12 volt. And my suggestion to you guys, the more you can keep your system running 12 volt, the better. If you can cut out the need of an inverter, so much better. Anytime I want to use the inverter, I simply hit that switch. You'll hear the beep up front, which means the inverter up there is turned on. And plugged into that inverter is this power bar. So if I need any power at all, I simply turn that switch on and it turns on the power bar and you plug in things that you need. So if I want to power the speakers that are inside of my van, I plug the white plug in and our speakers back here have power. Also back here, I have my control unit for my Wabasto dry air heater, which runs off gasoline, which is tapped to my gas tank in my van. But I keep this back here beside my bed because if I ever need to turn the heat on in the middle of the night or turn it down, it's all right here. I don't gotta get out of bed and run over somewhere else. Um, I just find it's just easiest and convenient to keep it right here beside my bed. Also over here, I do have a little light. This one's pretty cool. It's got a USB plug on the side here and you push that button and we got brightness, a few different brightnesses for a nightlight. I use this one as my primary one when I'm in bed all the time. Where did I get this one? I bought this one from Ray Outfitted and I don't know where they got it or anything like that. Um, it's a pretty cool unit. I know you can buy similar ones to these off of Amazon. They just don't have the USB plug on the side there, but it's pretty cool. Over here, was my initial light switches for everything inside of my van. So what I did is I actually wired this thing to a Jackery battery, which I kept inside of this cabinet here. I just wired the positive negative to this to a positive negative on a cigarette lighter, plugged it into the front of the Jackery and it powered this panel. So if I needed to switch any lights on or anything like that in my van, it was running off my Jackery inside of this cabinet and super capable. But what I find is the longer you spend in van life, the more power you end up adding. Once you get power, it gets worse. I found that when I had no electricity in my van, I didn't need it. 
until I got a taste of it. Once I got a taste of a bit of electricity, it kept going farther and farther <laughs> and farther. Now I have kind of found my happy place in my van running two 100 amp hour batteries. That seems to be the perfect sweet spot for me. I have two of these switch panels in my van. One up front here inside of my house. Is that a weird way to put it? And one back here where I can access from my desk while I'm editing, kind of in my office. Is that weird? <laughs> my office light switches, the light switches from my kitchen and the inside of my home. So each of them run different things. These are my house lights. I have four lights that run all around the inside here, pretty much lighting up my house and my kitchen. The great thing about these up here is they're actually awesome for cooking with because it lights up my entire stove area. All these are, are LED puck lights. The links to all this stuff are on my website. These are just stuck to the roof with some double-sided sticky tape. And I like it like that because if I were to put holes in my roof and then I were to just say buy another light and then it didn't quite fit in the hole that I had from the last brand, I find if I just run the wires behind all of these angled pieces here, these, then you can hide all the wires and just tuck the wire out a little bit, stick your light to the roof, just like these ones are. So if you take a look, there's a little wire right there that is really hard to see and these are just stuck to the roof. The panel that's in my office has the switch for my LED light strips, which are those there, and also the lights that are above my desk. And I have lots of lighting here, way more than I need. I know vans that have four lights in their entire van. I have four lights at my desk alone, two on one side and two on the other. My reason behind doing so much lighting at my desk is because I like a lot of light on my workspace. If I'm ever writing something down, I don't know, I've always just liked a very well lit up workspace. Plus it also helps with lighting because it's right beside my face for when I'm doing live streams on YouTube. I just simply kick that one on, kick on the lights here in the front and it usually adds enough glow that we can live stream with some eh, decent color. That round unit there is my Victron battery monitor. I don't ever look at that round thing on my wall. To me, that thing on the wall has no use whatsoever to me. But because of that little unit, I can check it here on my cell phone. I just go to the Victron app, open the app, click on Van City Van Life. It'll now load my entire battery system. So it's telling me that my batteries are at 100% that there's 14.32 volts currently, and we have three surplus, four surplus watts coming in, meaning that whatever's being pulled out of power inside of my van currently, we have three watts, four watts left over above what's being used. Okay, I just unplugged my fridge because the compressor was currently running. I am bringing in 17 watts, 16 watts of solar. Meaning that when that compressor was on, it was probably using about, you know, 10, 13, 14 watts of power to run that fridge. I think having this little system running on your van is a great idea. I'm using the Victron one because Victron is like one of the largest names in solar and these units are so amazing. Having this and being able to see your entire electrical system in your hand anytime you need it, whether you're in bed or you're up in the front of your vehicle, you don't gotta come back and try and read that tiny, tiny little, little battery monitor back there because you have it all right here in the palm of your hands, which is pretty amazing. But they do make cheaper versions of these on Amazon. I don't know how they work. Maybe one of you guys out there that are watching this video have purchased the cheaper ones and can let them know in the comments if they're worth buying or not. They may function exactly the same. I don't know, I've never owned one. And for external power or anything I need outside of my vehicle, like at the campfire, I just use a portable battery like this one here from Jackery. I have two different ones. This one is my favorite, the small E240. And I also have the big Explorer 1500 because I'm sponsored by Jackery. So they sent the bigger one out for me to check out. But I enjoy having the ability to have power outside without running an extension cord from my home because I could do that. I could literally plug a cord into the front of my inverter right there because there is um, an output plug there. I could run a cord across my campsite to where I am at the campfire. 
But one, I don't want to trip anybody walking by. Two, I don't want to fall. Three, I don't want my dog to fall or be running somewhere and get hung up on the cord because it's dangling out of my door. I actually enjoy having a piece of portable power with me because it comes in handy. It's kind of a seasonal thing though. I find I use the portable power more in warmer, nicer weather than I do when it's colder outside. Because when I'm cold outside, that's where I want to be. Not outside freezing my butt off trying to stay warm around a campfire. I could just turn my heater on and stay warm inside of my van. But that's why I like having some portable power to take with me because when I'm out there, it keeps my music playing on my Bluetooth speaker, keeps my cell phone charged that I'm filming on right now, and also keeps my personal cell phone charged when I'm away from my van. But it's definitely not something that you need. It's not a necessity that you need. Nothing that I have in my van is a necessity for you. That's something that you're going to have to figure out on your own. That's why I think people should always follow this little philosophy that I've, I've had since the very beginning, is that if you start simple and live in your van with nothing in it, you will slowly learn as the weeks and months go by what you really need. There's no need to go out and buy all this stuff before you start van life because you might get 200 amp hours of lithium power from CanBat like I have and realize that that's not enough or realize that is way too much. You might go out and buy two little switch panels like I have, maybe in the back and the front. Then you might realize that having two switch panels is just silly, that you only needed one. So that's why I always tell you guys, live in your van, buy something small, like a little portable battery of some kind, like maybe one of those little batteries, or do what I did. Buy a little inverter so you can charge your laptop or camera battery or whatever you need, and just plug it into your van and charge it while you're out adventuring around and starting to learn how to live in your van. Because I think van life is very much a personal experiment. What I do and what works for me is something that very well might not work for you guys. But when it comes to power, I have found took me years to figure this out. That 300 watts of solar on my roof and two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, they're from CanBat, uh, a Canadian company, um, are exactly what I need. I think that's perfect for my scenario. I charge a laptop multiple times in a day because I edit videos. My cell phone gets charged multiple times in a day. My cell phone gets charged and then running general lighting and stuff like that around the van and maybe running my heater for a half an hour in the evening or in the morning if, if it's a cold day. And I find with the amount of use that I have that I can sit still with no electricity coming in from the sun or electricity coming in from my alternator, I can sit still for two full complete days. That means two days of my laptop getting run for about five hours in a day plugged in while I'm editing videos or three hours at a minimum. But I have two days before I need to get on the move again. I don't like to put my batteries down to zero, even though I can take them down to 20%. I don't like to because that means I'm gonna do, have to do a lot of driving <laughs> over the next few days to get that power back in my battery. So I myself run things down to about 50% or maybe 40% before I go out there and get another charge. But for me, that works. I am always on the move producing these videos. So you'll figure out your van life after you get into it. You might find that you're the person that sits still. If that's the case, you need to be very cautious with your power because you only have so much stored power in there. And if you're running a fridge that's pulling constant power, that's a constant state of draw on that battery. And if you're not getting very good solar with the amount of solar you have, or you went too small on your solar panels, you're not gonna get in enough power to keep that thing charged without running alternator charging. And I know I have a lot of American folks that watch my channel or people in places where they get sunshine all the time. And they're like, alternator charging? Why would you do that? Because I live in Canada. Our sun is not above us right now. Our sun is still, it may have been there all winter. Now it's about there. <laughs> and as summer gets better, the sun gets a little bit better for us. But we have a short, prime, pr you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Primo. Primo? Prime. We get a very short, perfect solar summer. <laughs> okay, something like that. 
we get a very short window of really optimal solar when your panels are flat on the roof like mine. Mine are up there completely flat. It means that I need to either drive my van at a serious angle towards the sun, so the sun's that way, I need to tip my van over until it hits the sun angle, or do a tiltable solar array up on the roof. And you can do that. There's companies that make panels, you click the thing and you, you tip the panel over, you put the pin back in, bada boom. Or like my friends at Ray Outfitted, they make these electrical ones where you just hit, simply hit the switch and your panels go beep. I, I, I'm, I'm not a gangster like that. I don't have all those ball, don't get me wrong, my van looks balling, but that's, 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 a, bit, that's a bit much. <laughs> Imagine having like electrical solar on the roof. Man, what a what a luxury that would be because then it doesn't matter. You never have to get out of your van on a rainy day. You just hit the switch until your solar goes boom. There's a good level and then you shut it off. Oh, guys, the luxuries. <laughs> I watched my friends at Ray Outfitted put those in over the summer um, in a van and what a cool thing. And if you're wondering how I charge these little units, I simply take this, plug the cable into here, and I just plug it into my house battery system. It doesn't drain them that much, and I usually leave them plugged in when I'm driving or stuff like that, or if we have a good sunny day, I'll plug this in and get this charged up while we still have some renewable energy coming in. Um, but if you guys are gonna start van life, I think if you're gonna keep it simple, and you don't have a plan to do a full-blown van conversion from the very beginning, and you just wanna get into your vehicle and sleep on the floor with some plastic cabinets, I think this way is the way to go, or just doing a, buy a simple little 30 watt little inverter and plug it into your cigarette lighter if you have things to charge. But I think when you get started, doing a small battery like this one, like the Explorer 240, um, is something you can take with you on your journey because this comes in handy when you have all of this. When you've got your solar, your few hundred amp hours of lithium, this little one comes in handy. I don't know, you guys know I'm a big fan. But I think if you start, keep things simple. Um, let's talk about having massive amounts of solar and a small battery system in your van. If I have two days, of sitting still and using my house the way I use it electrical wise. If I have two days of use, maybe three days, before I have to get more electricity back in from, from solar or driving. Two days, imagine if I had four 100 amp hour lithium batteries, I'd probably have four to five days of sitting still. So all that matters is that, how, do, how am I gonna word this? People get confused with this sometimes. The more stored energy you have, the longer you can sit still before you need electricity to top things up. If you had one battery, you'd have a short amount of time that you could sit still. If you had two batteries, a little more. Three batteries, more. Four batteries, more. Do you kind of get it? 200 amp hours is my money spot for being comfortable because I know in a couple days, we know me, I can't sit still. In a couple of days, I'm gonna be back on the road. The second I start my van, it's getting charged right away. I know this video is probably getting a little bit long, but that's where choosing the right battery from the beginning makes sense. So I originally bought, when I first put a full system in my van, I originally bought an AGM battery. When you have an AGM battery, you can't add a second one to the older AGM because the new one's got a charge up here. The old one's not doing so good. The second you connect them together, it makes the new one the same state as the old one. So when it comes to choosing your battery, lithium may be a bit more expensive, but it's also a bit more durable with like, if you were to abuse it, like run it down to zero, they can handle a little bit more user abuse than say an AGM battery or a lead acid battery. Lead acids aren't a good idea. I ran a lead acid when I first started because I couldn't afford an AGM because they were a little bit more expensive. But running a lead acid means that you could possibly have some off-gassing in the van. I ran one, no problems at all. But when money got a little bit better, I had the chance to upgrade to an AGM, which are sealed and don't off-gas, making it safer for when you're living in a van. But I find now that I'm a lithium owner, now that I own <laughs> lithium batteries, I find that doing lithium, if you can hold out a little bit longer and go that route, 
would be a better option for most people. They're expensive. They're like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars for a one hundred amp hour battery. That's very, very pricey. So depending on the brand is going to depend on the price and where you live and whatnot. And one 100 amp hour battery in a lithium means that next year, if you decide next year that you want to upgrade your lithium batteries, you can buy yourself one more lithium and add it to your other lithium. Just make sure that one's charged before you connect them both together and bada boom, now you got a bigger electrical system. The lithium allows you to upgrade where the AGMs and lead acids, you can't upgrade in that point without replacing that battery and then adding the new one on top of that. Please don't hold me on that, but I'm pretty darn sure that that is correct. I don't know a ton about this stuff. I just know some of the things that I've learned over the years. Electrical isn't my area of expertise. That's why Ray Outfitted installed all of my solar stuff for me because I just, it's not my thing. Anyway, you guys, I don't know if this helped any. I know some of my long-term viewers are like, we already know this stuff, Chrome. I know, but I know there's a lot of new people around here that never get to hear me talk about my electrical. Why I don't talk about my electrical all the time is because my system works. When you're in the van for a while and your system just works, what's there to talk about? If it's all working, what's the point of bringing it up? I literally never think about my, my CanBat lithium batteries. We had one hiccup in minus 30 something winter where the batteries are like, heck no, and the BMS shut, shut itself off. That's the only time I've ever had to think about those batteries since I've been in the van. And that's a good thing. If you can install something behind a cabinet and you just never think about it for, for a year, two years, three years, four years, then that is a good product to buy because if you don't have to think about it and it works, <laughs> heck yes. If you have chronic problems with something and it's forever coming up in a YouTube channel's video, I probably don't buy that product. But uh, everything I have in my van has worked. It's never really failed me except for minus 30 where things were... Pfft, even my jackeries are like, we're not working, it's too cold. But on that, everything in my system has been working perfect. I never think about my solar. It's never a thought in my day. It's never nothing. I don't really look at my system and go, oh no, I need to start my van today. Because I move a little bit more every day and we get a little tiny bit of solar here and there as the sun peaks out here in our, in our Canadian winters as we're moving slowly into summer and we're getting a little bit better solar now. But I don't think about my electrical ever. It always seems to be at about 80% or above. Sure, if I have a long editing day, it might be at 75% left, but that's a lot of leftover power. I think the worst I've seen it lately has been like 60%. But by the end of the next day, it's topped up back to 100 and we're good to go. Anyway, guys, I know I'm babbling at this point. There's probably lots of things that I missed. So if you guys have questions about anything when it comes to my electrical, leave them in the comments down here and I will set our awesome assistant Madison loose in the comments on this one and get her to pull out any of those questions and maybe I'll make a follow-up video or put it in a Q&A video down here at some point. But I wanna leave you guys with one thing and I know I preach this. It's like I open up your guys' mouth and just shove this information down your throat all the time. You guys getting this? <laughs> you getting this? <laughs> <laughs> keep it simple do not get confused when you watch a channel like mine and i got all these toys that i have spent my hard-earned money adding perimeter lights and light bars and all this crazy stuff this is my home and i have had the chance over the years to customize it so it's perfect for me a place that I am proud of, a place that I call home and feel at home. Please keep it simple, you guys. You do not need this stuff. You don't. You don't need any of this stuff to be happy. Take it from me. I have all this stuff. And I was just as happy in my basic simple home as I am today. You're probably asking, why didn't you keep it basic, Chrome? Because I'm not that guy. I used to customize lowrider cars my whole life and now that i've had the chance to customize my home i get that same satisfaction of working on my vehicle doing upgrades on my vehicle that i did when i used to have my lowrider car like putting rims and tires on this thing was like i remember those days except for i'm sitting higher now and not like boom sitting a little lower cruising down the boulevard but uh, i um 
I want you guys to know that no matter what financial bracket you guys are in, start your van life very simple. You will get more out of your van life if you keep it simple at the very beginning and get to learn your van space. Get to learn what you need for electrical before you waste your money on products that you may not need at the end of the day. Because it's nice to have the luxuries, don't get me wrong, it is so nice. But the luxuries that I have in my van may not be even close to the luxuries that you're gonna need in your van. I know a lot of people that have very elaborate electrical systems. People like you guys ask me quite often, can you run induction cooktops off of your Jackery? Ken, why don't you have an induction cooktop in your van? Why don't you have, and they're listing all these items and products. Is because I don't want to use 50% of my van batteries just to have a few little luxuries that I may use once in a while. You know what I mean? Once you start getting into microwaves, induction cooktops, and all those high power items, you're going to need quite a hefty battery bank and solar system to back that up. And my system in my van, believe it or not, is like, I was talking to Ray Outfitted when I went there the other, day, other year and they're like, your system is the epitome of a basic, basic system. My only electrical needs I have are running those speakers once in a while, which pull like 150 watts. I got full volume, at full crank. Those speakers only run 150 watts and that's including my DJ controller being plugged in. 150 watts or 160 watts or something like that. I'm living large out here and my system, believe it or not, is pretty basic. If I were to rip all the fundamentals down, it's pretty basic. Even though I got perimeter lights and lights on the front, those things actually run off my front battery, except for my porch light. Never mind, my porch lights and my perimeter lights run off the back. Anyway, guys, I'm running and babbling along just way too much. Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you on the next one.